Um, I also want to invite you to learn more about Minnesota's tribes and native people. And there's usually very interesting history on the tribal websites. And I've listed them here for Minnesota. And also uh, I've listed them here for North Dakota and then for South Dakota as well. So I encourage you based on where you are, please, uh, please do avail yourself of that history. It's very interesting and it's, it's good stuff. So then I wanna talk a little bit about the TechSoup chapter because can I just ask, is TechSoup new to many of you or are you all familiar with the TechSoup Connect events? You can put a green uh, check mark or a red X in your box from the reactions toolbar or you can nod if you're showing video. <coughs> I just want you all to know that it's free and uh, techies and non-techies are welcome. Technology is not my first language. And so I love the resources TechSoup makes available. And you can attend as many or as few events if, as you wish. So even if you join the chapter, doesn't mean you have to attend all the chapter events. But I hope you're able to give yourself some time to follow the links to learn more about the TechSoup Connect free events because there are chapters all over the country and I think internationally too. I've been on several calls that were international. And then if you wanna get more notices of these events, please feel free to join the Minnesota and Dakotas chapter to get updates. And then I wanna make sure that everybody knows there are great uh, equipment and software discounts available through TechSoup. And I hope that your organizations take um, take advantage of those. When I was an executive director, which I was for 16 years, I loved the discounted um, licenses available through TechSoup. It's a great service to nonprofits. And then I want to just briefly introduce the chapter co-hosts and say, please feel free to reach out and connect with us if you find what the chapter is doing interesting and if you'd like to be involved or recommend uh, topics or that kind of thing. So uh, Kathy is on with us. And Kathy, do you want to unmute and just give a 30 second introduction? Sure. Thanks, Becky. I am the past organizer for Eli's uh, meetup group on TechSoup called Net Squared here in the Twin Cities. So welcome to anybody who made the jump and the leap over into TechSoup Connect. Yay. <laughs> uh, I have been involved in all volunteer nonprofit organizations since the a long time ago, late 70s, when I was a, a college student. And uh, it continues to be one of my primary interests. Thanks so much. Thanks, Kathy. And Marianne, welcome. So glad to have Marianne's services today. She's kind of helping uh, co-facilitate and watch the chat and make sure we record and that kind of thing. Hi, y'all. It's been really a, a privilege to work with um, these two and, um, and with TechSoup. It's like you never have enough resources to do your job. And I really appreciate the continuing education and the support network. So it's wonderful to be here with y'all today. Okay, thank you, Marianne. And then Eli, I'm sorry, I didn't put you on the slide, but did you wanna say anything to the group? Sure, well there. Hi, my name's Eli, I'm here in Vancouver, Canada, and I get to be the cheerleader and support person for you and Kathy and Marianne. Um, so you're gonna be the public faces, you know, building this community and I'll be the person telling you that you're doing an amazing job as you go through that. So I work for TechSoup and I support actually the 40 other chapters who are doing similar kinds of community events globally. So for those of you who are maybe are coming from other cities or other states, go to events.techsoup.org and see if you can find a community that's closer to your backyard. Otherwise, you should also stay here because this is going to be a fabulous event, and I'm delighted to have all of you here with us. Thanks, Eli. Okay, so now I'm going to do some TechSoup um, announcements, and one of them is I want you all to save the dates. We have a few other upcoming events for our chapter. They're not online yet, but so this is hot off the press. You're the first to get these dates. So the next one will be Thursday, February 3rd, and it's Challenges of All Volunteer Nonprofits with Kathy. And then on April 7th, we will be doing um, a session on using video to tell your story. And that's gonna be with uh, Shana Jurens of Storyhouse. 
And all of our sessions, just so you know, we're hoping will be from noon to 115 Central because we want them to be doable for you. And most people do take a lunch. We're gonna be meeting on first Thursdays. And for 2022, we're looking at a schedule of February 3, April 7, July 7, October 6, and December 1. And if you can mark your calendars, because what doesn't hit our calendar, we tend not to do, that would be great. And then uh, I want just to make sure you know that TechSoup can connect you with a variety of donated and discounted products in addition to the software. There's some hardware, some projectors, hotspots, refurbished hardware, and much more. And you can visit TechSoup. Uh, there are links in your PowerPoint, which you'll be receiving at about 12.15. Maryam will send it to you in the chat. And then here are some of the brands um, and companies that TechSoup works with that they can help make software and equipment available through. And again, this will be in your packet that you'll receive. And then this is just an example of some of the cost savings um, that you can achieve through TechSoup. And I thought this was a nice slide to include because today's topic is budgeting and most nonprofits are always looking for additional resources. And then there are also forums available through TechSoup where you can help get answers to some of your questions. And again, you don't have to scramble to write this down. It'll be in the packet that Marianne is gonna send to you. So I now want to invite all of you to introduce yourselves in chat. We have limited time just for the topic today. So I do though like it when we can build community and I think all of these calls provide an opportunity to do that. So if you'd like to share your name and position and your organization and location, and if you feel like it, your biggest frustration with developing grant budgets, and then if there are any resources that you've used that you think are particularly helpful that you would like to share with your colleagues on the call today, please feel free to do that. You are welcome to share resources at any point. And we will have a one minute announcements um, where I'm gonna ask you to unmute and share announcements at the end after we do Q&A. So I will briefly introduce myself now. As I said, I'm Becky Schuler with Rebecca Schuler Training and Consulting. And when I train for my own business and also as I train for TechSoup, one of the things I like people to know is you're always welcome to outreach me if you have questions. And if I can't answer them, I'll be blunt and let you know, or I'll try to refer you to somebody who I think can. But the easiest way to reach me is always email. I have a 1910 farmhouse with metal siding and a metal roof. So the cell connection doesn't work so great, but I've given you uh, my landline here in case you have uh, a really quick question and you're in a crisis trying to get something together and need to ask. So feel free to do that. And then I've been in the nonprofit sector for 30 years. In fact, I was just posting something on LinkedIn this morning and nonprofits um, are my professional passion. And I was a nonprofit executive director for 16 years. For those of you in the housing world, I was also a COC coordinator, a continuum of care coordinator for HUD for the 12 counties in Northwest Minnesota. So I have a lot of experience with rural nonprofits. And then my background is I spent about 15 years going to school and living and working in Chicago. And while I was there, I worked with women's organizations and in <clears throat> excuse me, in refugee services. And I did fundraising for some international social and community development projects. And then since I've been in Minnesota, I've been in the housing and homelessness world and also working with high-risk youth and families. And I opened my consulting business in 2017, and I primarily work with nonprofits and tribes and counties. And that's all I will say. Uh, I don't want to do um, a long, boring introduction, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of brief background. Oh, one thing I should say, I was the uh, primary resource development lead at three different organizations for 25 years. And so that's how I come to some of my grant writing background. And I was involved in federal grants and state grants and also private foundation grants, as well as local United Way and other community and faith-based organizations, smaller grants. So, our learning objectives for today. I hope that you will learn at least one new tool that you can bring back and use in your organizations as you budget. 
And I hope that maybe you can connect with at least one other individual, maybe from something you see an interesting comment in chat who you might wanna network with or learn from. And I very much hope that you will leave with some basic concepts for formulas and cost calculations. And if you're a very advanced grant writer, this might uh, not help you quite as much, but I do have some grant writers who I've trained who have said the budgeting piece was very helpful for them, which is why um, I wanted to offer this through TechSoup. And then I do hope you'll leave with at least one new resource for your continuing learning and professional development. And I will talk about a few resources at the very end. Oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to chew that. So as we move into this discussion of budgets and budget narratives, one of the things I like to say is that if you can develop your grocery budget for the week and go to the store when you're not hungry and stick to your budget, you can do grant budgets too. They're just more zeros. And some people think that's too simplistic, but I really think that it's just like anything else in life. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And so I'm happy for those of you who are totally beginners who are starting today. And I wanna note that Marianne just posted a comment in chat that she sent out uh, the PowerPoint handout for today. So it is in the chat box and I'll leave the chat box up for a few minutes um, after the end of the session today for anybody who isn't able to download it easily. So the first rule for budgets, and really my number one rule for budgets is everything has to be 100% transparent. And that's because mysteries in budgets create problems. And what that means is when reviewers are going through the budget and trying to decide if they're going to fund you or not, or how many points they're going to give you for the budget section of your grant, they will dock you points if things aren't clear enough. So one of the tips that I always offer is spell out your formulas for your cost calculations. Even if you simply take an annual cost for something like postage or office supplies and divide it by 12 to show the cost per month over 12 months. It's very important that you include at least some type of a cost calculation or formula. Mm -hmm. And then I have a few planning tips. One of the things that's enormously helpful is to make sure you know what types of expenses are eligible, meaning what is your funder going to allow you to charge to the grant? So you, of course, in your organizational budget have many, many kinds of costs, but some of these costs your funder won't pay for, um, and others they might be very willing to pay for, and yet others you might be able to call them and make the case for why they should pay for that cost, and they might, they might say, okay, you can include it. You also need to know what time period the grant covers. Unfortunately, our funders um, play this game of funding Sudoku where they don't always have timelines for their grants that match our fiscal years and the budget year for our individual programs. So it's really, really important that you know um, not only what are the costs that are eligible, what is the time period the grant will cover, but actually when will the grants be available, right? So if you submit on December 31st and it takes three months before their board meets to review, and then it takes a month after that for them to get announcements out, that means you might not be starting until mid-April or the beginning of May. And so you always wanna know what's the period of time over which you're gonna prorate those costs. And then one of the things I like to share is that budgeting is really a team sport. And for those of us who have spent a lot of our careers as solo practitioners, that's a little bit of a rude awakening, but it's really important that we know what program costs are needed. And it's very helpful to talk to the line staff who run the program, as well as the program director to really get a sense of what would you like to see included if there's enough money? Um, let's figure out everything we need and then figure out where it might come from. And then how are costs allocated in your organization? Is there a certain, is there a certain um, percent that will be automatically assigned to your grant for say the audit or um, your overhead or that type of thing? And so then that was that last point is how will those administrative costs be prorated? And <clears throat> will you put them in an administrative percentage or will you find a way to 
direct allocate them in your grant, meaning specifying them in individual line items. And then the last thing I wanted to share, <clears throat> excuse me for my froggy throat today, is that grant budgets must balance, okay? Uh, your organizational budget or your program budget may or may not balance because there might be other considerations that you're taking into account, but usually the funder needs to see their budget that you submit to them balance. And I'm going to show you two different kinds of budgets today. Um, and in both cases, the grant budget balances, although the program budget might show a small surplus. And I want to just stop. I feel a little like a talking head here. Are there questions so far? Is there anything I've said so far that has lost those of you who are very new to this? Any oh, questions? I have a question, Becky. This is mm -hmm. Kathy. Um, when you said that it's a good idea to include your formula for cost calculations, for okay. example, the postage example you gave, is that so it doesn't look like blue sky? You're just pulling a number out of the hat for like, you know, $80 a month or something like that. So it shows how you got that figure. Yes, and it, so the funder can kind of assess, do I think this is a reasonable cost for the program as described in the narrative? <clears throat> because ultimately your budget is there to back up your narrative and justify the request you're making to the funder. So that's a great question, Kathy. Thank you for, for that one. Anyone else, any questions? Marianne, you're muted if, if you were meaning to say something. I think Joe has his hand up. Oh, okay, Joe, go ahead and ask. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing that on my screen, but okay. No, actually, I think the question that was just answered uh, addressed what I was gonna ask, which was the cost allocations and just reporting them in the breakdown. So I think that, thank you, I'm, I'm good right now. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. And I apologize, yeah, I just did not see a note on my screen that you were asking a question. Okay, so we're going to do two basic definitions, and this might seem too basic to those of you who have experience, but because we have a wide range of folks on the call, we're just going to do it. And Joe Dell, can I call on you? Would you mind reading this definition of the grant budget for us? And whenever I ask you to read, if you'd prefer to pass, just say pass. Grant budget. Uh, while an operating budget details your expected revenue and expenses for the coming year, a grant budget outlines the costs associated with the project you're seeking to fund for the period of time the grant covers. Thank you, Joe Dell. I figured being in the accounting world, this was a good one for Joe Dell. And then my addition to this definition is it's eligible costs for the project that we're concerned about when we're talking about grant budgets, because we know we have many other program costs and organizational costs, but when we submit the grant budget, we are only submitting for eligible costs. And then this is a longer one. Joe, would you like to read for us? And it doesn't matter if you read perfectly or not, just read as clearly as you can. Will do. Thanks. Uh, usually separate from your narrative, the budget narrative is where you explain exactly what you want to spend your grant funds on by budget category as defined in the RFP. Some funders require a specific form for this, while others allow you to create your own format as long as you utilize the funder's budget categories. Be sure to present line item detail that clearly shows how much each item costs, how many units you want to purchase, and the total for the line, as well as explaining what the item is and how it is important to project, to project activities and, contribute, and contributes to the achievement of project goals. Provide the total for each budget category, as well as the annual project totals. If the grant you were applying for has a matching requirement, you should also present a line item matching budget by funder defined budget category. Thank you so much, Joe. You were a really good sport about that. I'm sorry, that was a long one. I appreciate that you were willing to read. That gives y'all a break from my voice. So these are the definitions we are working with today. Are there questions about the definitions? No questions, okay. So uh, we are going to start by reviewing um, a fictional budget for a community meal ministry. And this is roughly based on an organization in the Bemidji area 
that took my grant training a year ago, and I realized that they were not valuing their volunteer labor. In other words, they weren't putting an, a financial number on the hours um, of volunteer time that they received, and that made the whole scope of their budget look very different. So I didn't ask them for costs, I made up costs. And so just so you know, this is a fictional budget. So this is a budget they submitted to United Way at the beginning of COVID when there were some COVID emergency grants available. So what they're doing is they are showing a budget that shows their expense line items, how much they're requesting from United Way, that first column next to the expense line item, and then the amount contributed from the agency and other funders, and then the total cost for their needs for the program. So you see they have food, they have paper products, they're cleaning, maintenance, and sanitizing, their personal protective equipment like masks and gloves and aprons. There's a van that the local church that hosts their food ministry allows them to use. Um, they do have some insurance costs. Um, and some of those are donated and some of those are cash costs. And they have office supplies and postage, not a ton, but they do have some expenses. And then they have a small budget for volunteer acknowledgement, which we always want to remember in our programs when we're working with volunteers is it's nice once a year to do something special to acknowledge our volunteers, even if it's just a small budget for craft supplies and if program participants make some things that then we gift to the volunteers. So. These, of course, are the cash expenses, as it says at the top here. And as you see, the total cash they're asking from United Way is $10,000. The total cash that they are receiving from their church, I'm sorry, I said agency, I should say their faith-based organization, and their other funders is $17,221. So total, the cash budget they work with for the year is $27,221. Does that make sense, folks? Any questions so far? Am I going through this too fast? Or is this pace okay? <laughs> okay, I'll assume it's okay. Yes, silence, it means we are very happy. Go for it. Excellent. Okay, so then we have in-kind expenses for the program. So volunteer time is a whopping $178,090. That's a lot of money, folks. It's a lot of money that they weren't adequately claiming credit for. So then there's donated bread, and I'll show you some of the cost calculations, okay? That comes to $15,600. There's in-kind space from the local faith-based organization, um, which is in the center of town, where they actually hold the, um, the food ministry program. So they're hosted by a church that's roughly 20 miles outside of town, but they, they do the food ministry in town at another faith-based organization. And that space comes to $13,000 a year. And again, I'll share that cost calculation. And then they get some donated food from the local Bemidji Community Food Shelf and from the USDA Commodity Program. And then there are some donated masks that community members have made and donated um, that volunteers use and rewash and that saves on some of that PPE equipment. So the subtotal for their in-kind expenses, as you see, is $217,000. $390. Again, that's a lot of money to not take credit for when you're going out and asking for funds, because what you want to let your funders know is their cash gift leverages a lot more money. And then the grand total for all of their expenses, when we add cash and in-kind together, for United Way, it's $10,000. Again, this grant budget submission is balancing. The amount from the agency, or excuse me, the, the faith-based organization and other funders is 234,611. And their total budget then comes to $244,611. Again, that's a lot of money. That looks very different than the roughly $30,000 they usually report in cash expenses. Questions at this point? Okay, you might have them. As I do go. have a question. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I've gotten some um, competing information. I would well, love your point of view. Sure. 
I've heard in the past that a lot of donors do not want to be the sole donor for a project. Mm -hmm. So um, like, how do you go about report? And I've also had uh, um, some grants. I, I manage the grant writing, but I don't do the grant writing directly. Okay. I've also had some grants where I've been told like, no, we should account for every dollar being offered on certain, is it really a case by case basis or is there sort of a standard best practice for how we should approach a potential funder in requesting capital for a project? So I'm sorry, when you say capital for a project, are you just using capital to mean money or do you actually mean a capital project? Um, just money, just money, sorry. Okay, oh, no, no, that's fine, Joe, good questions. So this budget that I'm presenting here is showing all the costs for this food ministry program, okay? And it's also letting the funder know, hey, this is the money we're requesting from you. And these are the line items we're gonna spend it on. This, and then in, next to it, this is the money that our um, host faith-based organization and other funders are contributing. And these are the line items we'll spend it on. And here's the total. So I think it's fine to do a budget like this that shows the total, but you don't have to if it's not required and if it doesn't add to the case you're making to the funder. So I think it's really about what is going to be meaningful to the funder. And um, one of the things I always recommend is before you submit a grant, have a brief conversation with the program officer. And this is one of the things you can ask them. You know, what, what's the kind of information that you would find most compelling? What, what level of detail do you want to see in the budget? Do you want to see the total program cost? Do you just want wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's our money only. What, what do you want? And I think that's a great question to ask funders. So Joe, I want to ask you, hold the second half of your question um, until we look at these two budgets and then ask it again, okay, if you still have it at that point, because I think, oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. I think that um, some, of, some of these um, next couple slides might answer some of that. So one of the things I want to do is I want to pause for just a sec and say, when I valued their volunteer time, I did it at $28.54 an hour because that is the current estimated national val value of volunteer time. And the sources at the bottom here, that's from the independent sector, okay? So you are welcome to, unless your volunteers have a specific kind of expertise and regularly bill out at a certain amount of money per hour that they can document like a lawyer or an accountant or someone like that, then you can in general use 2854. Okay, so now let's talk about the revenue for the community meal ministry. So a lot of times when we do budgets, we make the mistake of only showing expenses and I think we want to show full revenue as well as expenses. And a lot of times funders will ask you for that. So in terms of the cash contributions, because this is a budget where we're separating out the cash from the in-kind contributions, they're showing United Way COVID-19 emergency funds, $10,000. They have some faith outreach monthly offerings that come from just passing the basket at faith-based organizations. On average, it comes to about 10,000 a year. They have a federal emergency management assistance grant that's 3,500 a year. And they get donations from individuals. And again, this is based on historical patterns. It comes to about $5,700 a year. So again, from United Way, they're asking for 10,000 in cash. From their faith-based hosts and other funders, um, they're getting 19,200 in cash for a total of 29,200, so just under $30,000. And when we add in these in-kind contributions, again, you see we've got the volunteer time, we've got the food shelf and USDA donations, the bread donations, the donated church space, and the masks for volunteers. And so this in-kind total comes to set, excuse me, $217,390. That's a lot of money. Okay, and then their revenue total um, becomes overall for the program $246,590. And you can see there's a small budget surplus. And sometimes people ask me, can you have a surplus in your budget or is it better to zero it out? 
And so I'm going to use Kate Barr from uh, Propel Nonprofits, her advice. Your grant budget usually needs to zero out, but your overall program budget can have a little bit of a surplus or a little bit of a deficit. And I think that when we're dealing with some projected costs that are based on historical averages, and when we're in the middle of a pandemic, some of these costs, like the faith monthly outreach offerings and donations from individuals, your funder is going to understand that those costs will vary a little bit and might not exactly come in at the target. So I don't think they're going to have a major problem with that. So I want to stop and again ask if there are questions. How are you all doing with this so far? Does this make sense? Okay, our accounting person is nodding. That's good. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions at this point? This is a good time for questions because I don't want to confuse you. Okay. This is, so this is so, Kathy again. Yes. I, I just wanted to ask you to perhaps clarify when when you're talking about a budget for a project um, grant proposal, this is not your accounting system. You are not putting the in-kind contributions into the accounting system. Is that correct? Or maybe I'm- Kathy, such a question, such a question. Okay, here is the answer. Um, this is the budget you're submitting to your funder. And ideally you want the line items to line up with your agency's chart of accounts. And how come that is? Jodell, why do we want the grant budget to line up with the agency's chart of accounts in terms of line items and the order we put them in? Because we want to make your life easy, okay? We have to report on this grant at some point. And the funder's going to expect us to report kind of similarly to the budget we initially submitted. So if our agency's chart of accounts is substantially different, that's going to cause some problems. And someone's going to need to spend some extra time massaging those categories to get them in the right order for that, fo that foundation or grant report. And so we want to make sure that we are able to submit a grant budget um, with line items in the order that matches our chart of accounts. Or if the funder has a different order of line items, we want to always call that funder in advance and ask permission, not forgiveness, okay, at, that we be able to use our own chart of accounts. We want to assure them we will help line up the titles of each of the line items so it's very clear how it corresponds to the line items in their budget. And Kathy, the second part of your question is, this is for the budget. It's not something the agency tracks. I want to tell you the standard answer you'll get from auditors. Your auditors are going to tell you that if you report monies in a grant budget, you should be tracking those monies in your agency. So you should be issuing receipts to donors for in-kind gifts, and you should be putting it in your books. Now, that is more in-depth than I was going to get into with everybody today. So I'm going to leave that explanation there, but I want to promise you that I have a resource at the end um, that is an excellent resource for you to talk to about some of these questions. Let me pause. I want to do a new share. I'm going to bring up an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, let's just see if uh, Zoom is happy with me today. Okay. So, sorry. Let me do a share again because I know that it's showing a pause. Uh, resume share. Okay. Are you all seeing an Excel spreadsheet here? Okay. And it's probably really tiny, isn't it, folks? Yes. Okay. So let's do view. Let's do Zoom. And let's see if we can go to 200%. Okay. And I know I need to now move the screen over. So, all righty. And let's go to the top. So this is an example um, of the, again, the Community Sunday Meal Ministry. And it's a little more in-depth what I always recommend is that you do your budgets in Excel first and then convert them to Word if you need to or whatever other format your funder's asking for them in. So again, this should mimic the budget we just looked at, right? So here's United Way, here's the food ministry and other funds and their total costs. And you can see I'm giving the cost calculation assumptions because this United Way grant is a little simpler than some other grants applied for. But we're saying here, 
Our annual costs for protein are at 3,900, dairy at 3,900, fruits and veggies at 6,800, and then rice, potatoes, noodles, and baking supplies at 2,600. And let me think, uh, yeah, so I, I did a few count, oops, excuse me. Let me, okay. So if you look at the meat, for example, if you look at this formula bar, you can see that I'm saying, I'm sorry, you might not be able to see that because it might be too small, but it's $5 a pound times 15 pounds a week of meat that they need times 52 weeks in the year because they serve every week of the year. People, people don't stop being hungry on the holidays and other you know, events. So they serve 52 weeks a year. And then for dairy, I'm showing again, five bucks a pound um, times about five pounds a week because dairy isn't the main thing they serve. It's to, you know, thicken sauces and gravies and using baking and that kind of thing times 52 weeks a year plus a little extra. And then vegetables, you can see again, I have a calculation. So I have some reasonable financial numbers in there. And then when we go down to paper products, we're saying it's $30 a week times 52 weeks. And this is for things like napkins and paper towels and aluminum foil and to-go containers and all the other things that we need. And again, so a funder can kind of figure out from that, well, I know that when I buy tin foil, it's about five bucks a roll. Yeah, this kind of seems reasonable. Then the cleaning and maintenance and sanitizing costs, you can see again, we're giving a number per week. It's 20 bucks a week times 52 weeks. When we talk about the PPE, um, we're gonna be a little more specific. We're gonna say, hey, those gloves are expensive and they're about 10 bucks a box. We need about 24 boxes during the year. We need masks for guests because we can't uh, always get our guests to uh, return the donated cloth masks so that we can wash them and reuse them. And those masks are 60 cents each times 60 people a week we serve times 52 weeks. So you can see we're giving some decent detail. And then here's where I messed up on this travel line item. I'm sorry, I gave you an old uh, mileage rate and I have a new one for you but I had calculated it at 80 miles a week times 0.575 times 52 weeks a year, okay? So you see that for all of these costs, I'm giving a calculation. So I'm not leaving it out because I'm not sure what it is or because I'm like, well, gosh, I don't know what I'll say. You have to figure out what you're gonna, what you're gonna base the costs on. You see office supplies and postage, it's very simple, $50 a month, times 12 months. And any funder can look at that and say, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense given the number of donations they're bringing in and everything else. Um, and then again, for the in-kind costs, I'm also explaining. So it's 15 volunteers a week times eight hours a week each times 28.54 an hour, which is that national valuation on volunteer time times 52 weeks a year. And this is for shopping and meal prep and meal setup and cleanup and serving and the administrative volunteers as well who run and coordinate the program. So then bread uh, assumes they get 100 loaves a week donated times three bucks a loaf times 52 weeks. And there's some extra bread if they're roughly serving 60 people a week. And that extra bread goes home with the people who come to um, eat during the meal ministry. And then they have costs um, that they're showing for the donated space, right? And so the local Methodist church in town rents that space at $250 a day. Prep and feeding takes a full day times 52 days a year. And that's how we come up with that number. And then for USDA and food shelf donated food, we didn't have a great calculation. We just said it's approximately $200 in food. If we had to go out and buy that food, that's what we'd be paying every week based on what we get from USDA commodities and the food shelf. And then donated masks. It's an average cost of six bucks a mask. If you go out to buy a homemade mask somewhere, it's about $6 times 50 masks for volunteer use. And then they launder and reuse the masks. Okay, so how are you all doing so far? Is this reasonable? Am I losing anyone with anything? I have a couple questions, if you don't mind. Certainly, I don't mind. 
<laughs> um, so we're go. So I'm about two and a half months into my role here at my at my job, and one of the things that uh, I've encountered is that we're transitioning our chart of accounts to something that I think is based on the United Way. Oh. Is there like a standard for how your chart of accounts should be presented? I know the one, the previous organization I was at had something similar to, I think, what the United Way is and that there's a code number and then a definition, whereas previously for this organization that I'm in currently, we had um, just sort of like a very basic verbal description. Is there a preferred way or is there a standard we should use? Um, I would say the standard you should use is the standard that works best for your organization. And I know that's kind of a vague answer, Joe, and I apologize. No. I want to say... Um, if United Way is your single biggest funder, then maybe it's appropriate to use the United Way's chart of accounts. Mm. If they're not, or if you have multiple other funders who you also approach, you might wanna use a chart of accounts that's a little more standard because as I remember United Way, um, they're a little more in depth than some other charts of accounts. And I'm gonna tell you, I am ultimately not the right person to answer this question. And the right person uh, you will find at Propel Nonprofits. And Propel is currently advertising some free training and also some trainings they charge for. And I'm gonna give you all that link at the end of this, uh, at the end of this presentation, because I always say, go to the best for your financial information. And when it comes to finances, the best is not me. And I just like to be transparent about that. So we I also have one more question, if you don't yes. mind, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So ahead. looking at the volunteer line, we're, so we're a dance company. We have a dance studio as part of our company. We've done work study and scholarship students who have supported us like running the front desk or doing class support. Looking at the volunteer line, do we calculate that time? Or because they are in some ways compensated uh, because they get classes for free for the volunteering or is- The question is, who does that compensation come from? It comes from your organization or- Our organization. Okay, so the work study too, that money comes from your organization or that comes from their university? Uh, that's a good question. I believe it. I believe it's coming from us. Mm -hmm. For us, work study typically, it, the way that I understand it is that um, someone is a teenager and wants to be a part of the youth company. Mm -hmm. We have them work on a Saturday and then they can take a class during the week for, for free, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question because that volunteer is getting some compensation in exchange for their time. That's a question. And I wanna make sure that I say this really clearly. That is definitely a go ask your auditor question, okay? <laughs> because for every organization, it might be handled slightly differently. But I would ask your auditor how they are going to make you report that, okay? And generally, the rule of thumb is if the value of what you get from them in terms of labor exceeds the value of what you give them in terms of a donated class or a free class, then you can count the difference between those two numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. So coming back to this budget, um, I won't belabor it. I just wanted to show you all, this is what your budget looks like in Excel. And of course you're gonna restate your costs a little bit, but for a simple budget for a small grant from United Way, you might be able to get away with this as a budget narrative. And of course, you're, you're basically putting your line item budget and your narrative together here with this column that I called, um, what did I call it? I called it something like cost calculation assumptions, okay? So this is because it's a relatively simple budget, even though there's a lot of um, backup for the numbers. But again, you can see um, it comes up to quite a substantial amount of money um, over just the cash costs, which are formerly all that this organization was counting. And this is an incredible number to show your funders that you are leveraging in the way of support, right? Um, and it also gives a much different sense of the scope of the operation you're running, right? This is not a small potatoes operation when we're talking about $246,590 a year. So I also, you can see, I, I didn't put these in the budget, but I was just running for my own purposes a few numbers. I tried to figure out what's their cost per meal, including some of the to-go meals. They have 60 people on site, plus they send some meals home. 
you know, what's the uh, total number of meals they were providing. Anyway, um, that's just one of the things that Excel makes it easy to do is calculate some of those things. So I wanna take this down now, is that okay with everybody or does anybody else have questions about this? Okay. So let's take this down. Uh, I'm going to try to go back to the regular presentation. Okay. And are you seeing that again? Are you all, somebody nod your head, are you seeing? Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. So now we're going to talk about a different kind of program. This is a more complex program. And this is the Cass Lake Home Visiting Program, which is a home a program that sends home visitors to meet with women and children when they have left the local domestic violence shelter, OK? So it's an aftercare support program. And these are the expense line items. And this is a budget they're submitting to a foundation. They already got a grant for this. Um, from the Minnesota Department of Health. But we are going to start with the expense line items. So you see we've got salary and benefits, then we've got contractual and travel, blah, 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 all the way down to evaluation and reporting. So I hope you all can see this bottom line. I'm sorry, I just realized it's cutting off a little bit. But for the ABC Foundation, you can see that the salary and benefits they're charging come to $66,674, right? And um, the amount they're getting from their agency and other funders, including the Minnesota Department of Health for this program is 62,215. Then they have their contractual and you can also see the amount they're getting from their agency and other funders, okay? And the total, the same with travel all the way down. Now. I want you all to take a look at this very bottom line item. You see this evaluation and reporting line item? And you see how there's a zero under ABC Foundation? That's because they are showing match for some costs um, for this line item instead of charging it to the grant. And it's all coming out of their agency budget and the Minnesota Department of Health monies, okay? So when we subtotal the other expenses for the foundation, we come up with 33,326. So the total grant, and again, I apologize, I hope you can see this very bottom line, is the total grant they're seeking from the ABC Foundation is $100,000. The amount of money they're showing in match from other funders and their agencies is 111,214. So the total program is valued at $211,214. Questions? That makes sense to you all? So again, I'm showing you a way of reporting your budget to the foundation that also lets them know the other monies that are going into the program, as well as explicitly what you're charging to them for each line item. And sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes we just submit an expense budget to a foundation and we say, we need $10,000 or whatever we need. You know, this grant is for $10,000, but we don't explicitly say to the foundation, this is what we're going to use your money for. And I always advise doing that because a lot of times different funders will have different eligible costs and they want to make sure you're not spending their money on ineligible or disallowed costs. So um, I'm sorry, let me go back for a minute. Okay, I want to again do a new share and this time I wanna bring up a budget narrative for you for this program. And then we'll go back and look at revenue and that kind of thing. So let me just see, are you all, are you all seeing Cass Lake Home Visiting Program? No. Okay. And that's because I need to, I'm sorry, I need to resume share. How about now? Are you all seeing Cass Lake Home Visiting Program? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the head nods. Okay. So one of the things you can see we're doing is we're titling this. It's the Cass Lake Home Visiting Program, which again is fictitious. Um, and this is the budget narrative for their health outreach program for January to December of 2021. They're identifying that the proposal is submitted to the ABC Foundation 
and they're giving a little summary, right? The Cast Lake Home Visiting Program is requesting $100,000 for 2021 to implement an outreach-based aftercare program using a registered nurse and outreach specialist, okay? And the grant represents just under 50% of the total project budget. And I'm sorry, I updated that number. It's, it's closer to 211 or 12,000. But you see, we're trying to position it for the foundation. We're letting them know how much their grant is gonna make up, responding to Joe's question earlier, versus how much is gonna come in from other funders. So um, I don't want to kill anyone with detail here, but we will just take a quick look at a couple of costs. So one of the first things we want to identify is what are we charging for personnel? So you can see that we have 3.07 staff charged to the program. And of these 1.57 direct service full-time equivalent staff are charged to the grant. And then below in the evaluation line item, we're gonna charge some other staff costs, but we're gonna show it as match. We're not gonna charge it to the grant. So for these outreach specialists, we have 2.0 full-time equivalents and at an annual salary of 32,000 each. 50% of each FTE is charged to the grant. So that formula is two staff times $32,000 times 0.5, because only 50% of each is charged to the grant. It means a total of 32,000 for those two staff are charged to the grant. And then we're showing match of 32,000 as well. So again, we're showing this foundation match in the same line item where we're charging the grant expense. And then there's a receptionist slash client greeter. This is a 1.0 full-time equivalent position, an annual salary of $27,000. And we're only charging 50% to this grant, um, which comes to 13,500 annually. And we're providing the same amount in match. Okay, although you don't always have to provide exactly the same amount in match. You can vary it by line item. And then there's a program director, right? There's a 1.0 full-time equivalent program director who has an annual salary of $50,000 and we're only charging 7% of this person's time to the grant for staff supervision and program oversight and supervision of that contracted registered nurse and client safety calls and staff evaluations. And that means that we're charging 3,500 for that program director to the grant. So these salaries, if I did my math right, should add up to $49,000. And as match, we're showing 45,500. So the reason, I'm sorry, thank you for bearing with me uh, through this. What I wanna show you is we're being very explicit about the ca cost calculations, okay? We're not leaving anything up to guest work. We don't want those foundation staff reading our budget and scratching their heads and saying, what? What are they trying to show us, right? We wanna make it very explicit. So I'm gonna go down to next to our contractual, okay? So let's use the example of an audit. Okay, so the total agency audit costs are 10,000 for the year, and that's for a total agency budget of a million dollars. Okay, this is only one program of that budget, keep in mind. And this grant comes to 21% of the total agency budget. So the amount charged to the grant is going to be 10,000, which is the full audit cost for the year times 21% or 0.21, which comes to $2,100. And we're not providing match on audit fees. And we're just being explicit here with the funder. We're not doing a match for this particular line item. And then, um, so what I wanted to point out with the way we calculated this audit cost is there are a couple different ways you can show formulas for cost calculations. And one of them is you can simply multiply apply your total annual cost by the percent of your budget the grant comprises, okay? Just like we did here at this using this 21% number. And then there's another way we can do things, okay? So another way to cost allocate your costs is to say for landline and internet, we have total phone costs of 3,200 a year for the agency. We have nine total full-time equivalent staff. So we divide 3,200 by nine, and that comes to 356 
per full-time equivalent staffer annually or $559 for the 1.57 direct service FTEs we're charging to the grant, okay? So that's another way to do it. And then you see here under cell phones, we're saying we mandate that our staff have cell phones when they are doing their work for our agency. It's needed for safety and to reach their clients. So we have 1.57 staff charged to this grant. It's 30 bucks a month. That's the stipend we provide for cell phone use times 12 months, okay? And then this is a very simple formula. So we don't have a very complex formula here for office supplies. We're simply saying we're charging a hundred bucks a month times 12 months. And it's for these kinds of things, okay? And then as we scroll down and look at occupancy down here, this third highlighted section you're seeing on the screen, um, rent is 600 bucks a month times 12 months. And that's $7,200 a year for 2,500 square feet of space. Now that's used by all of the staff who contribute to the program, 3.07 total staff. So there's total rent of 12,700 a year for the agency that's divided by nine FTE staff um, for an average per staffer of 1,411 annually. And we're multiplying that times all 3.07 full-time equivalent staff charged to the grant. And this gives us the total number we're gonna charge to the grant for rent, which is $4,332, okay? How are you all doing? Have I lost anybody? Jodell, you look like you have a headache. <laughs> are you doing okay? <laughs> okay. All right, so I want to scroll down. I want to stop going through some of those formulas, and I want to explain one other thing. The biggest problem I always had when I was writing grants was there was never enough money, <clears throat> right? I could never claim all the costs I wanted, and so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't claim what I needed for essential positions. So one way to include some additional um, essential positions, which aren't maybe directly related to the program, but you still need to run your program and to operate your organization, is to include it under this evaluation and reporting line item. So I'm not going to do the executive director because that's pretty standard. A lot of you will already try to claim your ED. Let's talk about your financial director. So the financial director is responsible for budget, budgeting and oversight of monthly financial statements and grant financial reporting and tracking matching funds, Kathy, and cost unit accounting. So 15% of that individual's time times an annual salary of $55,000 is, you know, $8,250. We're going to kick in taxes at 10% for another $825. We're gonna kick in health insurance, which is low at 600 a month times 12 months, times that 0.15 FTE percentage of time, plus 3% for retirement times the percentage of salary being charged to the grant. Um, and that comes, up, that comes up to a total of $10,403 just for that position, which we are providing as match. But if you have a grant where there's enough money it doesn't have to be matched. It can be a cost that you directly charge to the grant. And that's an example of a direct cost allocation to the grant for one of those positions that's typically thought of by some as overhead, but which we know are essential to our organizations. And then I just wanna point out, if you see the footer, ignore the Becky Schuler stuff. We always put a footer on our grants, the Cass Lake Home Visiting Program, it's the 2021 budget submitted to the ABC Foundation, and this is page two of three. Again, we're being very explicit and transparent so they don't have to wonder, oh, did we get the whole budget or are we missing something, okay? And then I wanna show you how we do this revenue summary. There's a very particular reason we're doing the revenue chart in this way. And I'm sorry, folks, I forgot to tell you. All this document is, is it's a table in Word, okay? And the beauty of tables in Word are you can merge cells, you can add rows and columns and that kind of thing, and then it's converted to a PDF. But a lot of times you're gonna be asked by your funders, is the funding from your other sources pending or confirmed? 
So you're listing each source, you're listing if it's pending or confirmed, you're listing the date you were notified or will find out, or you're listing, okay, this is based historically on our ongoing annual donations. You're being specific about the amount from their foundation. That's why it works as a budget for their foundation. And then you're talking about the amount you're getting from your agency and other funders, okay? So you see, we also have 100,000 from MDH, Minnesota Department of Health. We have local donations. These are donated food and hygiene products and clothing that people give. We're 3,000 and we have a golf tournament that usually nets about $9,000. So that brings our total budget, um, or excuse me, that brings our total revenue to about 112,000, okay, from the agency and other funders. So if we add in the foundation grant, it brings total program revenue to 212,000. And then there's a small surplus, okay? We're showing a small surplus of 786, which again is very reasonable given that we never know, will we really get 9,000 from the golf tournament? Based on historical numbers, we project that, but that might vary a little. Same with some of these local donations for food and hygiene and clothing, okay? I'm gonna stop, questions. Just a quick note, Becky, uh, yes. my computer says it's 104. Just Thank after. you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, I'm going to try to be efficient here. Okay, so we are going to go back to our main screen and just will you verify for me, are you all seeing the main screen again? Okay, so uh, one of the things I wanted to say is there is a calculation here for calculating staff time. Sometimes that gets very confusing to us when we're doing grant budgets, partly because we're under the stress of the grant deadline. And so for the different hours per week, I've shown you what is the decimal equivalent and what is the FTE or the full-time equivalent percentage, okay? And I just want you to see the formula that's being used. Um, and the way we might describe this, some of the language at the bottom of the screen, okay? Um, and if there are questions about this, I'm happy to take them after we are finished. So I also want to make a note, the current mileage rate. So the mileage rate varies. And I think last year it was higher than it is this year. But this year it is 56 cents a mile for business use. I've given you a couple other numbers because there's a volunteer use number. Um, but just note that the mileage rate is projected to increase for 2022, just like everything is going up. And I've given you the IRS source at the bottom of the slide. So going back to our revenue line item, this looks just like the chart we looked at on the budget narrative. It's no different. And again, it shows that small budget surplus at the end. Okay, wanna pause again. Are there questions about this? Okay, I hope I didn't overwhelm anybody with some of those numbers. I just want people to understand the importance of very specific cost calculations. So a couple other grant budget development tips. We, I'm sorry, Marianne, did you wanna say something? Uh, Becky, there was just a question about whether that staff slide is a part of your present of the slides it up. Yes, Thank Darlene, you. it is. Thank you for asking. So again, I said this earlier, but I want to reiterate it. Always contact your funder to ask permission to present your grant budget according to your organization's chart of accounts if it's different than the way they lined up the line items, okay? Because again, we want to make Jodell's life easy. We want it to be easy when we have to report on the grant. We don't want someone to have to spend a lot of extra time massaging the budget categories so they work for the funder's chart of accounts. And then always, always, always prepare and edit your budget in Excel first and then convert it to Word for your budget narrative, okay? I cannot overestimate how incredibly important this is, especially for people like me who sometimes struggle with, <laughs> okay? So do your budget always in Excel and do all your revisions in Excel before converting to Word. And then you wanna align your budget with your narrative. So if you have some special costs in your um, program narrative that you're describing, make sure those are reflected in your budget. Because again, that's one of those things where if you've said, we're gonna give a rental stipend of $800 to each family we serve, 
and it doesn't appear somewhere in your budget, your funder is going to be scratching their head and going, what is this? Okay, so we always want our budgets and our narrative to align. And then we always want to include some costs for new staff and new projects or programs. And sometimes as nonprofits, we do this thing where we say, oh, we'll just get donated stuff. But there are some things it's hard to find donated. And sometimes it's hard to find a decent desk with working drawers. Sometimes, you know, you need a trash can, you need software licenses. Sometimes you require that your staff have vaccinations that you pay for. And I'm even talking pre-COVID, right? Flu vaccinations and hep C and some other things. So make sure that you include those real costs in your budgets. There are a few excellent financial management and budgeting resources. And I want you to know if you work in a nonprofit and you do anything with budgets or grants and you're not familiar with Propel nonprofits, this is the all time best resource for you. We are blessed in Minnesota to have Propel here. And I know there are folks on from other states. There are a lot of other good resources nationally, but I want to say, Propel has some upcoming free trainings and you want to check their website and get those marked on your calendar. And then the National um, Council of Nonprofits also has some really good resources and it's definitely worth going to their website and checking it out. And then Marianne, thank you. Marianne has again popped into the chat box a copy of today's presentation because not everybody had joined us when she sent out the first version and you don't sometimes get things in chat if you join a little later. Okay, so I wanna just open it up again. Are there questions, folks? Did I lose you on any of this? Joe, I thought it was you... really eye-opening. Um, very thorough, maybe over thorough for some of the grants that I've been seeing or dealing sure. with, but I'm also doing, um, we're doing a bit of a capital, not a bit, we are doing a capital campaign. So mm -hmm. I'm also seeing some translation from what you presented here into how when I talk to a bank or someone else that I think just in giving the transparency and also knowing, I don't know if I would give all the same information, but I think there's also just topics to touch on and themes to present. I think this has all been very useful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for the feedback, Joe. And I want to say you're correct. You might not need to share all this information with some of your funders. That's kind of something you'll figure out as you get more practiced at this and as you have conversations with your funders. So you might choose not to include some of this. I just think for us as nonprofit professionals and grant writers and um, financial staff, it's a mistake if we don't know our full program costs, right? So you might not show them all to the funder, but you need to know what those are. So you're not shortchanging your organization in some of the grant budgets you're submitting. So again, here's my contact information. Please do feel free to reach out for support or questions. The easiest way to reach me is email. Okay, that's email. So feel free to reach out. And let's do um, some one minute community updates. And for those of you who have to leave, we understand. <clears throat> and then I do have just a few other TechSoup uh, resources to share, but um, please feel free if you'd like to give um, a little update on something special your organization is doing. If you've got, had some good news, if there's anything else interesting going on. So Joe, where are, um, where is your organization based and what is the name of it? It's called? Joel Hall Dancers and Center. We're based in Chicago. Uh, oh. We are a 47 year old BIPOC uh, founded queer led dance company that really focuses on African-American dance and urban jazz in particular. Joel Hall, he is a pioneer uh, in that form. And uh, yeah, we've actually, through the pandemic, we shut, we rented a studio that was, a, <laughs> I think as many nonprofits might uh, um, relate, a bit of a money pit. And so during the studio, we closed our doors and uh, actually got connected or deepened our relationship with the Riva and David Logan Foundation, who've given us a new building, um, that an existing building that they purchased, but we're responsible for the renovation of the interior. So we're working very hard now to get uh, the capital raised to do that, to make our forever home a reality. Uh, so that's sort of the, the good news is that we have a, 
a home. The the challenge is that we got a lot of money to raise to be able to live in it. So right, right. Yeah, thank you for that update. That's awesome. Joe Dell, do you have some news you'd like to share? Are you with Min Casa? Am I remembering that right? I am with Min Casa, yes. So tell folks what Min Casa is and tell us something new that's going on for you all or whatever is most on your mind. Um, we are basically a training and education national um, resource for doing trainings on sexual violence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and good news. Hmm. You know, my organization is doing so many good things right now, I can't even pinpoint because um, most of them are all the program side and I'm the numbers cruncher. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I understand that challenge. And then, Co, do you want to share anything? So you're muted, just so you know, Co, if you're trying to talk. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Don't let me rename you. Okay, Eli or Kathy or Marianne, would any of you like to share anything? Okay, I just want to say thank you. Sorry. No, I'm that's a little okay, slow Co. finding the button. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is very helpful. Thank you. Good. Yeah, that mute button is sometimes a little elusive. I know that. Marianne or Eli or Kathy, anything you'd like to share? Sure. Well, I can dive in. So. Hi, Eli, the uh, TechSoup Connect community support person. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about is I'm just about to launch a chapter in Syria, um, which is one, obviously, a community that has been you know, having a very difficult time for a number of years as they've gone through some wars. Um, but the other part of that, which I'm excited about, is it actually allows us to start creating Arabic language webinars that I can now bring out to Arabic speaking countries that TechSoup serves in other ways. And we don't frankly produce a lot of content in that language. Um, so one of the joys of working with a local volunteer team in some of these other language and regional areas is I get to uniquely serve people who otherwise don't get a lot of tech for good content. Excellent, that's neat. I just plugged a resource in the chat box for you, Eli, um, that might be able to help with that. And then Marianne or Kathy, anything you wanted to share? to thank everybody for, for coming and if you have an idea for a presentation that you would like us to consider offering or any other uh, ideas for building our chapter please let us know get in touch Marianne anything you'd like to share I, I uh, was taking notes I have a few ideas to bring back to the dog rescue group and um, <laughs> We are not really tracking in-kind data. Mm -hmm. It's been on our on our sort of desire list. And just there's something about how you presented it that um, we've already started about having a chart of accounts that list in-kind um, categories. But, um, but uh, you stimulated my thinking about making it fat easier to, mm, to track. Good. Thank good. you. And it is hard for small all volunteer groups to do that. I want to just acknowledge that is difficult. Um, okay, so I just want to say here are some of the TechSoup values. Everyone is welcome and we are here to support each other. We just want you to know that we welcome your involvement in the uh, Minnesota and the Dakotas chapter, or if you're calling from somewhere else in the country or internationally, uh, you're welcome to join a chapter closer to you, but we welcome you. And we in the Minnesota and the Dakotas chapter, we're looking for a few good people. So if you would like to join to get notice of events, if you'd like to suggest topics or speakers you're interested in, you can contact Kathy or Marianne or myself. If you have some topic know-how and would like to present on something you think would be helpful to others, volunteer yourself, let us know. And then when uh, things get a little better with COVID and we're not worried about health and safety, uh, we'd love to have you organize a local event um, to bring TechSoup chapter members together. 
you can do a coffee hour or a happy hour or a decadent desserts hour or whatever you enjoy. And we will help advertise it. So it's not all on you. But we like to be able to bring people together in the different areas of Minnesota and the Dakotas. And then I just want to say we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And that's a quote from Aristotle. And so I hope you learned a few tips today that will help you establish some habits that stand you in good stead as you prepare budgets for your grants. And I hope you're able to get outside and take a walk, maybe eat a mango, or if you don't like mango, something else healthy like a salad and give yourself some research time. Stay safe, stay healthy. And you're free people here. Take good care. And again, if you still need to copy the PowerPoint from the chat, I'll leave it up for, for a few minutes. And thanks for your time today, everyone.